there are risk factors that you have for osteoporosis that you can control and there are risk factors that you that are out of your control and the things that you can control diet exercise getting outdoors um healthy lifestyle that we we got to do those things right the things that we can't control that are a little bit out of our control the genet our genetic makeup our our proclivity our our likelihood of getting osteoporosis as dictated by our genetics. Um, taking medications for other conditions can affect your bones. We've talked about some of those things, Dr. Anderson, you and I were talking about that earlier. You can't control those things. So the good news is that there are good treatments that are available. And I'd like our, our doctors to talk to us a little bit about the hopefulness and the good news in the medications, because we do know that people are There's a reluctance to take medication for osteoporosis because, um, you know, in the past, some of these medicines were not available and um, maybe didn't get a good rap out there. So can we talk about the good news in some of these medicines? Start with you, Dr. Allen. Sure. So I think, especially if we look at some of the more widely used medications like the bisphosphonates, that are they have excellent data on preventing other fractures. They don't really build the bone up for us in preparation for surgery, but again, most importantly, they're at least maintaining your bone health and do have some improvement in it and hopefully prevent further fractures. But they're usually relatively inexpensive. They have different ways you can take it, whether it's just a pill every day or once a week, and then some IV formulations that are given every couple months or every year. So it's really not that onerous to take many of these medications. One uh, important uh thing to consider is that these medications will improve your bone strength or what we call bone mineral density in other words how much calcium you have in your bones by percentages for instance as Dr. Elder mentioned bisphosphonates a common drug you're going to get a four to five percent improvement in your bone density or bones but your bone strength is examined by ability to uh, prevent fracture goes up exponentially. That is, it's 60% improvement in resistance to fracture with only a 4 or 5% improvement in bone strength. So not only are these drugs adding more bone or more calcium into your bones, but they are also improving the structure of the bone. And it's kind of like bridge construction. You have uh, all these uh, girders going every which way to hold the bridge together. Uh, and if you take out one of those, the bridge will fall down. We saw that in Baltimore about five years ago. It happened in Seattle. A bridge fell down. It just one thing got knocked out, and our bones are like that. But what these bo- drugs do is they repair the internal structure of the bone so that it's much greater to resist fracture. So a lot of patients are concerned, oh boy, I'm not getting a very good response only 5% improvement, but it, that actually translates to a huge improvement in bone strength. That's incredible. Yeah, that's incredible. Dr. Savage, do you? I, I don't have much to add other than um, I, I agree with you. I think there there is a lot of good news here. The reason why we're doing this, obviously, is I, I think awareness is probably the most important thing, right? And as a patient, you're always your own best advocate, right? So the more aware you are, I think that the, the, the kind of the better um, you will be and kind of, you know, um, making decisions about your health uh, and talking to your healthcare providers. Um, we haven't talked much about kind of when when do you have to start worrying about getting evaluated for this. So I'll just kind of comment a little bit about that. Um, in general, it's for women over the age of 65 and men over the age of 70. But if you have any risk factors, um, and then one of the more common risk factors um, is, is if you're at long-term steroid use for, for some other medical diagnosis, that's a risk factor for osteoporosis. And, and there's a lot of other various risk factors that, that we're all aware of. So when we kind of talk to you about the potential need of being evaluated, um, you, you may be evaluated younger than those age, than right. those age groups. But. Right. 